You need to let the police handle this. I tried. I'm not giving up on my mom. Hey, welcome back Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy, with here as always with my manager, Doug. And Missing is the newest installment in the genre of screen life suspense. Movies that take place entirely through the eyes of technology. So we're gonna break down this movie and all of its twists and turns, the third act's big reveal, and the alien invasion storyline that connects Missing to its predecessor, Searching. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. So Grace Allen, that's not a real name. I know, we'll get there, buddy, we'll get there. Grace Allen has embarked on a trip to Columbia with her new boyfriend, Kevin. June, Grace's daughter, is supposed to pick them up from the airport when they return to the States. But when she arrives, Grace and Kevin are nowhere to be found. My mom never came home from her trip. I don't know where she is. And so begins June's search to find her mother. She uses every tool at her disposal via the World Wide Web to track her down. But along the way, June discovers a dark and twisted history about herself that her mom had been hiding from her for over a decade. But more on that in a bit. So like I said, this film embraces the filmmaking style known as screen life. Now, I'm not a really big fan of this format ordinarily, but for this movie, it worked very well. Sure, it's a little gimmicky. Everyone's got a gimmick now. But screen life is used surprisingly well here and it plays a major role in the film's delivery of suspense. It really keeps you on your toes. Every time you think you've cracked the case, the entire plot is turned on its head, usually via notification, a search reveal, or a live video feed. You as the audience member are experiencing everything firsthand along with June and her computer. I'm a computer. I'm a computer -y guy. So the film opens with camcorder footage of June as a toddler playing with her father. The screen then pans out and reveals that this video is playing on a computer screen. Now it's important to point out that this computer is running Windows Vista. He's part of Vista, my new operating system. PCs have a lot of security problems. You're pointing out Vista's flaws, cancel or allow. The use of this operating system indicates to the viewer that the scene is taking place in the past. Or but then the video camera footage already confirmed that it says 2008. Yes, but that's when it was filmed. It's important for us to know specifically when that 2008 footage was being viewed by the user. So the older operating system gives us a visual cue that we're still in the past, as opposed to later on when June is viewing the same footage on a newer computer that's in the present day. This distinction is important to note because come to the end of the film, we have a flashback scene that is indicated by the change in computer software. All right, because of the big twist. <laughs> exactly. So. We see the user watching this video of June and her father, James. They're playing around and having a great time. But if you look closely, you can see that the father's nose has started to bleed. Now this implies the father is sick. The video then pauses and the user trims the video so that the nosebleed portion is no longer there, seemingly to protect June from seeing her father in pain. The trimmed down video is then dragged and dropped into a file labeled for June. We can also see a search history containing cancer research and tips on how to help children process grief, confirming that June's dad has died. Oh, but it's really on, buddy, we're not there yet. Sorry, 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 go on. All right, so we fast forward over a decade and the computer interface is now a more modern Mac computer. Hello, I'm a Mac. Featuring applications like iMessage, FaceTime, and various other internet and home security programs. This computer is being operated by a now 18-year-old June. She's your typical moody teenager, but she has an added layer of unprocessed grief following the death of her father all those years ago. June's having a hard time processing her mom having a new boyfriend, a boyfriend who's about to become her stepfather. I'm not gonna call him dad ever, even if there's a fire. When boyfriend Kevin comes to talk to June before leaving on their trip to Columbia, he says something in passing that sets up a big reveal for later on in the film. He asks, how's the old computer working for you? Implying that he gave June this computer. Now at first this seems like awkward small talk, but it's later revealed that this is how the mysterious villain has been able to stay one step ahead of June the entire time. The mysterious kidnapper has had access to June's computer screen the whole time, similar to how we, the audience, have had access to it as well. It's like poetry, it's sort of they rhyme. This movie takes twists to a whole new level. First, we think the boyfriend's the bad guy. Then you think the mom has actually hired him to help him disappear. And then you think the mom's friend slash lawyer is the one behind it all. And then you think it's the boyfriend again. And while this may sound discombobulating, it's really not. The screen life format makes you feel like you're the one doing the investigating. Not only does it make you second guess yourself, but it makes you third, fourth, and fifth guess yourself. And that is why this story is perfect for the screen life format. What is internet research if not a wasteland of contradictory information leading you down different rabbit holes, all in an attempt to find the truth? And that's what June is searching for, the truth. Not only the truth of where her mother is gone, but the truth of who she really is. Her dad's alive! Yes, okay, yeah, the mysterious figure that kidnapped June's mom was actually June's father, James. It's your classic. I 
am your father. James never had cancer, and the cancer research at the beginning of the film was really just Grace looking for an illness to tell June that her father died from. James's nosebleed wasn't because he was sick, but because he'd been snorting drugs. Tight, 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 yeah! And the trimming of the video wasn't just to hide the nosebleed from June, but to hide the fight between James and Grace that followed it. A fight that showed how abusive James was. And when Grace finds James's secret stash hidden in a closet, she uses it as her ticket out of this abusive relationship. Grace and June are then placed into witness protection. And we learn that Grace's real name is Sarah. And side note, her new name being Grace could be a biblical allusion to the ideological definition of the word. Grace can represent a sense of regeneration and starting anew, which is fitting for her situation. And the name June is noted for being derived from the Roman goddess Juno. Etymologists have associated Juno's name with the Latin word uvare, which means to help, which perfectly describes June throughout this entire film. Anyways, Grace and June go into Whip Pro and are safe for over a decade, but when James is released from prison, he sets out to find them, and that is where Kevin comes in. Kevin! Now, all the pieces are falling into place. Kevin and Grace were never really kidnapped in Colombia. The whole thing was staged to cover James's involvement. Grace never even made it to Colombia. Kevin hired a body double to trick everyone into thinking that she left the country with him. And Kevin and Grace's friend and Heather were both being blackmailed by James to do his bidding. Hey, uh, speaking of his bidding, what the, you know, what was his plan? What do you mean? Well, James kidnaps the Grace Sarah lady, hides her in a shed in Texas, and makes everybody think she's been kidnapped in Colombia. Yeah. Well, how does that help him reconnect with his daughter? Ah, uh, good point. And uh, sadly, I don't actually think that was his goal. He's not really mad about all the years he went without seeing his daughter. He's mad that Grace, or Sarah, got him sent to prison. And for that, he wants revenge. Revenge is not the Jedi way. I am no Jedi. James didn't even try to reconnect with June until she was about to crack the case and get him sent back to prison. Yeah, yeah, James sucks. Talk about the aliens. Right. The aliens. In the film Searching, another screen life movie that takes place in the same universe as Missing, we see several mentions of a literal alien invasion taking place. In the background of nearly every scene, you can find mentions of this alien invasion. There's a video titled Real Footage of Alien Sightings at Sequoia. Articles like NASA has issued an advisory for approaching electromagnetic anomaly. Anomaly in the sky. Internet lights up as thousands report green atmospheric anomalies. Ex NASA chief discusses extraterrestrial invasion rumors. NASA calls emergency meeting at White House. Defense secretary present. Now you could chalk all this up to a fun series of Easter eggs that don't really mean anything. After all, with screen life films featuring a whole lot of web browsing, the filmmakers would need fake headlines to put on articles and videos that you'd see in the background. But these alien Easter eggs aren't just in searching, they can be found in missing as well, making fans speculate that the next installment in Sony's screen life films could be taking place during an alien invasion. Missing and searching are both about missing people being looked for. So what if the next film's missing person was abducted by aliens? Screen Life is essentially a fun take on found footage filmmaking, and we've seen that format explore giant monsters destroying the city, cults of witches and demons terrorizing suburban homes, and Dane DeHaan becoming a supervillain. You do not feel guilty when you squash a fly. An alien invasion would be perfect for the Screen Life format because, let's face it, if an alien invasion were to happen, it'd be all over TikTok. And let's not forget, one of the scariest alien scenes in all time was this. So what did you guys think of Missing? Did it live up to the love of its predecessor? And do you think the next movie in this series could finally focus on the mysterious alien invasion? Let me know down in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe, smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.